eclipse is taking over the night sky across North America. This rare event happens when the moon, sun, and earth all align, causing our moon to turn red. Tonight's alignment also happens to take place right as we head into Pi Day for all you math lovers out there. So here to tell us more about the lunar eclipse and how Pi plays a significant role in its calculations, we have NASA expert Ernie Wright. Thanks for joining us. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. This is such a cool one and, and uh, kind of fun that it coincides with Pi Day here. But yeah. first, let's talk about what exactly is happening here during this lunar eclipse and one that gives us this, this blood moon. Mm -hmm. So during a lunar eclipse, it's the alignment of the sun, the earth and the moon. Um, the earth is projecting its shadow onto the moon. And during the total phase, um, the moon turns orange and red and dark red and brown. These are all the colors of the sunrises and the sunsets um, being projected from the Earth's atmosphere. That is so neat. That is so interesting. And anything, anytime something happens with the sun or the moon, it really is like a, a flocking event. A lot of people love to see it. So yeah. what defines a partial, partial lunar eclipse from a total lunar eclipse? What's the difference maker there, Ernie? I mean, I think for both kinds, people are just enjoying the fact that they get to experience um, being part of the solar system and being kind of aligned with everything. So a partial lunar eclipse is when the moon starts to enter the Earth's shadow, but hasn't gone all the way through yet. Uh, at the beginning of the partial phase of a lunar eclipse, it will look like a bite is being taken out of the moon, and that bite will grow larger and larger until the moon is fully inside the Earth's shadow. Uh, and that's when it turns sort of dim and red. Um, and that's when you get all those beautiful colors. But um, the great thing about watching the partial is that you're actually seeing the moon move through the sky and move through the shadow of the earth. Hmm. It's, it is, it's one of those things where every time it happens, it's just, you've got to t take a step back and just, wow, it's just so cool it's like to be a part of. It's like great to feel so insignificant in right. that moment. It is. Well, and, and speaking of things aligning, it is kind of cool that this lines up with Pi Day. So how exactly does Pi help astronomers and mathematicians in uh, predicting lunar eclipses? Exactly. Well, Pi is just the, the circumference of a circle divided by the diameter. Um, but when you calculate lunar eclipses, um, you need a lot of trigonometry, so sines and cosines and tangents. Um, all of those play an important role in the math involved in, in predicting an eclipse. Um, and that's what makes it feel uh, special that this eclipse is happening on Pi Day um, because it, it sort of puts the math together with the physics, together with the, the beautiful imagery, um, the fact that you're standing in the shadow of the Earth uh, because it's nighttime, but that shadow is extending 240,000 miles across space and hitting the moon. Uh, it's all very cool. And you can bring whatever sort of pie you like outdoors to watch this eclipse. <laughs> That is I a good mean, way to celebrate. If you've ever needed an excuse, uh -huh. there it is. Speaking of imagery, NASA has a mission right now that's orbiting the moon, taking really detailed images. Tell us what we've learned from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter about our moon. So Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter has been in orbit around the moon since 2009. It's producing global maps of the color of the moon, which tells us something about the composition of the surface, and the shape of the moon, which tells us where all the mountains and craters are. Um, the shape of the moon is what produces all the dramatic shadows near the Terminator, if you ever get a chance to look at it through a telescope. Uh, LRO is also measuring the radiation environment. It's measuring changes in temperature, which tells us something about how rough uh, different parts of the surface are. So basically we're learning that the moon is a living planet. It's not the dead rock that we thought it was. Huh, okay. Well, it's really neat to be learning all of the stuff about the moon at a time when folks are gonna be looking up tonight. Ernie, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate all the insight. Oh, it was my pleasure. And of course, if you want to learn more about NASA's LRO mission and all of their research right now happening for the moon, you can check out this story on coin.com. It's a bit of a